We see a lot of explosive reactive armor on Russian and Ukrainian tanks. In this video we look at various misconceptions and also one I was cured from last year by Professor Hazel, who noted I know I know because I've done this. More on this later. Note that Professor Hazel from the University of New South Wales Canberra did not work on the other misconceptions presented in this video. For the uninitiated, some information about what explosive reactive armor is and how it works. Explosive reactive armor are these little boxes and sometimes other shapes on tanks. What do they do? They are intended to defeat hollow or shaped charge warheads, like the Panzerfaust or Russian RPGs, but also more modern anti-tank guided missiles. There are also anti-tank rounds that use this principle. They are generally called heat shells for high explosive anti-tank. A hollow charge explodes in such a way that the directed explosion with the liner creates a jet that penetrates armor. The details are important here. Remarkably, contrary to popular myth, the material that forms the jet is not molten, but rather a stretching plastically deforming rod. It is usually referred to as a jet mainly because it is assumed that it behaves like a fluid during penetration. Explosive reactive armor in a way follows the principle of fight fire with fire. Much in the same way that the formation of a shape charge that is simply and elegant, its defeat by explosive reactive armor is also simple and elegant, discovered by Manfred Held back in the early 1970s. The simplest construction of ERA consists of two steel plates sandwiching a layer of explosives. Here you can see a simple example on how this steel high explosive sandwich setup might look like. So let us move on to the misconceptions. The first common misconception is that, as the name suggests, explosive reactive armor easily is set off and explodes if it gets hit by small arms fire or is set on fire, for instance, by Molotov cocktails. Yet, this is not the case. The explosives used in explosive reactive armor are generally low sensitivity explosives. These materials are very difficult, if not impossible to initiate unless a very violent stimulant such as a shape charge jet penetrates them due to the very high pressure region incurred into the explosive composition by the jet. It is relatively simple to guarantee initiation when desired, whilst at the same time remaining safe at all other times. There are a number of tests that are done to check this. As such, you can see burnt out tanks where the explosive reactive armor panels are intact. For more information on this topic, see my video on this topic. The next misconception is that explosive reactive armor is mainly an aspect of Soviet tank design, although the Soviets and nowadays the Russians and Ukrainians use explosive reactive armor extensively, it was and is also used on western tanks. It was actually Israel that first used an operational bolt-on error package, the Blazer system, in 1982 in Lebanon. The Israelis used it on M60 and Centurion tanks. Yet Israel was by far not the only user. Here you can see a US Army M2A2 Bradley with explosive reactive armor deployed in Somalia in 1994, while US Marines used explosive reactive armor on their M60s. The British used explosive reactive armor on the Challenger 1 and 2 main battle tanks, whereas in some cases it was only mounted to the lower glazes plate. Note that one of the newest examples is explosive reactive armor on the German Puma infantry fighting vehicle. Yet Western countries generally prefer non-explosive reactive armor, so why is this the case? So if explosive reactive armor is a very weight efficient system, why has it taken Western countries so long to adopt the technology? In recent years there has been a drive towards providing so-called low collateral damage reactive armor systems. This has mainly come about due to political and operational pressure. Reactive armor systems by their very nature can prove to be a risk to anybody that has happened to be standing around the armored fighting vehicle when it has been hit by an RPG, although arguably the explosive and fragments from the void alone would pose considerable danger to nearby individuals. It can also prove to be a problem for any low-flying aircraft too, mainly because of the high velocity that it is reached when the plates are isolated. This brings us to the next point, which was already teased in the beginning, namely that the explosion of heat high explosive anti-tank ground is as dangerous or similar to an exploding explosive reactive armor panel towards friendly tubes nearby, particularly infantry, and that as such the argument that error is less used by western tanks is not about safety. I brought this up in an interview with Professor Hazel and he explained what we need to consider here. 
is not the explosion of the heat round more dangerous than the aero panel itself? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so um, yeah, I've, I've heard that argument. I think it, I think it has some weight. Um, the the only thing I'd say is, and I know I know because I've done this. Um, you take some thin steel, say two three mil thick of steel. You sandwich it uh, with some sheet explosive in the middle, and you detonate that you'd recover that f heavily mangled um, fragment of metal probably a couple hundred metres away. Where you've got frangible materials, you know, those, what I mean by that is that they, they the, like, for example, the casing of a heat round, the, you know, the, um, and so on and so forth, um, the, we find that the velocity drop-off for lighter weight fragments is much faster than for heavier weight. So when you've got a, a an ERA cassette which has been or plate that's been, um, you've got a kind of a, a plate that's been kind of been mangled and, and is a kind of a solid lump that has the potential to travel some distance. Um, in fact, there are a couple of of um, inventions which have overcome that, uh, and uh, by using effectively. Um, composite kind of plates uh, and, and the like using frangible plates um, so there's, there's actually a product that that, that Rheimatal has which is um, uh, I can't remember I think it's called Clara which is a um, uh, composite light explosive reactive armor something, something like that anyway it is it's a product which is actually designed specifically for low collateral damage and to minimize that the the um, the, the travel of those those plates so so basically an explosive reactive armor block with steel is like a directional mine or a fragmentation grenade whereas an exploding yeah, heat round is more like to a blast grenade because the fragmentation is very limited. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's, well, it's, it's limited, you know, to several tens of meters, I suppose, but it, it doesn't extend out to hundreds of, of meters. I mean, that's the that's the main difference. I mean, the, the blast is another risk, but, you know, with we find that the energy density of a blast wave drops off according to one over R cubed. And that means that kind of the, as you've got this expanding sphere of, of blast energy, I suppose, that the energy density occupied by any segment within that is dropping off fairly rapidly. So that, you know, that's why, um, um, you know, we don't tend to, well, we do worry about blast, but, but at some distance, it's, it becomes less of a problem. Next, we need to look at what ERA works against. So initially, ERA was designed to work against shaped charges. As such, some people still believe it doesn't work against kinetic rounds, like armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sable, which are basically darts that have very high penetration values. Now, first-generation ERA, like the Soviet Contact 1, doesn't help against those. By the way, here you can see Contact 1, usually a lot of small boxes. Yet there is of course newer and improved explosive reactive armor. Mostly APFSDS defeating error consists of heavier and harder plates and larger volumes of high explosives. Probably the most famous example is Contact 5, which has been deployed on the T80Us and T90s. Some reports suggest that it adds 300mm of equivalent rolled homogeneous armor, protecting against APFSDS rounds by the propulsion of a 50mm thick front flyer plate. However, thicker plates mean that you have to use thicker explosive layers. Contact 5 generally has larger boxes, as you can see here, and keep in mind that this is still quite old. After all, it was still developed in the Soviet Union. Similarly, the Ukrainian NOSH system also helps against kinetic rounds, which destroys the armor-piercing fins destabilizing carbo dart with little shape charges. Another common misconception is that one can put explosive reactive armor panels everywhere. I mean, you can, but it won't be particularly effective and might even damage your armor. There are two main factors to consider, a minimum requirement of armor and weight. First of a minimum of armor is required. To quote, 
Protection behind the main error cassette is also very important for lightweight vehicles that employ error. Errors do not stop the precursor portion of the jet. A main battle tank has relatively thick armor behind the explosive reactive applique and therefore is capable of stopping all of the jet. Lightweight vehicles on the other hand generally have relatively thin hull armor, therefore the jet is more likely to perforate. This is highlighted by a common threat to lightweight armored vehicles, the RPG-7 grenade, which is capable of penetrating 300mm of armor steel. While error can reduce this penetration by 90%, this still leaves the jet penetrating 30% of steel, a thickness greater than that offered by the hulls of lightweight vehicles. One way to deal with this is to add additional steel behind the error cassette, yet this comes with another problem. This brings us to the second point, namely weight. The error cassettes have a significant weight increase associated with them and generally need to be applied to a large area. If this is done to a lightweight vehicle that also needs additional armor plating or strengthening to make the error work without damaging the existing armor itself, the weight increases further. This can lead to performance decrease such as speed and mobility. Furthermore, it can increase the wear and tear as well. Note that overall error is weight efficient compared to regular armor, but weight is always an issue. To summarize, first, explosive reactive armor uses generally low sensitivity explosives, so it only gets set off by shape charge jets or the high energy penetrations. Second, although mostly used by the Soviet Union and its successors, explosive reactive armor is also used on Western armored fighting vehicles, although they generally prefer non explosive reactive armor. Third, the explosion of heat rounds are less dangerous than the explosion of explosive reactive armor, since for heat rounds, the explosion is mostly limited to blast damage and very close range, whereas the fragments of an explosive reactive armor box can be dangerous around to 100 meters of range. Fourth, explosive reactive armor, depending on its generation, can also work against kinetic rounds and not just shape charges. Fifth, explosive reactive armor modifications require that a certain amount of armor is available behind it. If not, it will destroy the armor and likely injure the crew as well. Additionally, although lighter than steel, the blocks have considerable weight as well. Big thank you to Professor Hazel for the interview. Thank you to Putya Freiman for answering additional questions. Thanks to Andrew for reviewing the script. Thank you for watching and see you next time.